Hey, in this video I'm going to explain how to install Stevenson's rocket on motherboard based RAID. Um, before I start, there's some messy terminology I should probably explain. There are three ways to use RAID, uh, where RAID is combining together multiple disks for uh, speed or stability. You can let your operating system handle everything, which is um, what you'll find with uh, Linux software RAID or Windows, I've forgotten the name of it unfortunately. Uh, if you want to configure that, this is not the video you want to watch, that's a separate video. There are hardware RAID controllers typically made by Areca or LSI uh, which have a dedicated chip on them which does all of the RAID operations and then presents to your computer a single virtual disk and uh, halfway between the two is what you find on consumer motherboards which is software uh, motherboard based uh, fake SATA RAID there are various terms used uh, these are things like Intel, AMD or Nvidia RAID where instead of having a dedicated hardware controller the, uh, the RAID operations are handled by a driver on your computer this is a video you want to watch if you're already using RAID on Windows and you want to dual boot, for example. I would typically recommend not following this guide if you plan on only running SteamOS and instead go for the video detailing uh, Linux software RAID instead. Um, it's less fragile. So, uh, as you can see here, I have a single RAID naught array defined and I'm going to go ahead and boot the USB stick containing the latest Stevenson's Rocket installer. Now the first thing you'll notice is that I've added an option in this menu for expert install with RAID. Unfortunately the installer used by SteamOS is very broken when it comes to motherboard based RAID so I was unable to make it use uh, to offer installation onto motherboard based RAID and normal disks uh, from the same interface. You basically need to send different commands to the installer um, before the installer starts up which is why there's a separate menu option here. So again if you want to use Linux software RAID then just use the regular expert install. This expert install with RAID is only for motherboard based RAID. As an additional warning, during my testing I've discovered that on one of my test systems, but not all of them, just starting the expert installer and displaying the partition manager was enough to delete all RAID arrays on the system, which was very concerning. So if you already have Windows defined, uh, be very careful and make sure you have backups before uh, doing anything, uh, because I was very surprised to find that just displaying the partitioner was enough to delete the RAID arrays. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and start the expert install with RAID. Now there's some more things I have to warn you about. Because the installer was so broken, I papered over the worst cracks. Uh, I took it from unusable to merely bad. So there's some stuff you need to be aware of uh, that will bite you if you uh, don't take precautions. Um, these are basically con caused by confusion in the installer between partitions and drives and RAID arrays and uh, I hope to get this fixed in a future release of Stevenson's Rocket but for now, watching this video and doing what I tell you to do should be enough to prevent the worst problems. So, the first thing to be aware of is you will not be able to resize an NTFS partition on a RAID array from this menu. You can resize NTFS from the, uh, the regular expert install, but not if it's on a RAID array. So if you want to resize your NTFS partition, you should go into Windows, go into the Disk Manager, and uh, choose shrink volume from the uh, the context menu on the drive you want to reduce which will resize the Windows 
partition down. So that's how I resized this down to 500 gig from the original one terabyte. Uh, you'll see here it's listing a number of partitions separately as well as listing them up here. This is one of the problems I mentioned and it will cause you uh, a lot of headaches if you try to install while these options are listed. So the installer will essentially break if you try to install to an existing partition. If you want to restart uh, the installer, if you want to reinstall, you have to delete your existing partitions completely uh, for it to work. And then you have to reboot the installer, uh, otherwise the partitioner will get confused. So I know it's very messy, um, but you should see the official instructions for installing Debian on on motherboard-based RAID. It's about 30 steps, so it's still an improvement. So what I need to do here, where I have an existing install, is delete these two partitions, reboot into the installer, and then create some new partitions. So I'm going to delete this one, delete this one, and then to save the changes I've made to disk, I'm going to hit enter a couple of times on the Configure Logical Volume Manager, and I'm given a menu option to write the changes to disk. So I can hit yes, go back a couple of times, and abort the installation. Now I start the installer again. You see here I have the free space in which I can create some new partitions. So I'm going to create a new 10 gig partition. There's the root and the remaining space as home. Now you'll notice I didn't create the usual uh, recovery partitions, which are swap and boot recovery, uh, which you'll see in my first video. Uh, the reason for that is that the recovery system used in SteamOS simply does not work with motherboard-based RAID. In addition, if you create a swap partition, you'll have great difficulties deleting it again in future from this partition editor if you decide to reinstall. So I would strongly recommend not creating a swap partition, and there's very little to gain from creating a recovery partition because we don't have support for recovery on software RAID. So we hit Finish. The installer will complain that there's no swap partition, but that's fine, we know what we're doing. So we do not want to return to the partitioning menu. We hit continue, and it will continue to install. From here on in, everything should behave exactly the same as it does on a, uh, a real motherboard with, uh, with regular hard disks. Uh, there's nothing different from this point, assuming everything works correctly. And if it doesn't work correctly, then I probably need to hear about it, uh, either as a GitHub issue, or on Reddit, or Steam, or any of the usual places to contact me. 
So hopefully this has been helpful and enjoy using Stevenson's rocket.